Hello, and as the rain might suggest, welcome to Scotland and welcome to Porsche Perth. Now you might be wondering, why have I traveled the length of the country to come up here? Well, as the title of this video would suggest, my friend is taking delivery of not one, but two incredibly special cars. But why from Porsche Perth? Now, interestingly, I wanted to come and check this place out for myself. Something stood out about this place. The dealership is barely two years old, and yet down south, this dealership's name keeps coming up over and over again. And I'm like, what's going on, guys? There's plenty of other Porsche dealerships around. I just flat out asked a friend, I was like, why are you traveling all the way up there to buy your cars? He said, it's really simple. Um, there's less people buying Porsches up there and the service is night and day. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, absolutely. So when he said, look, I'm taking delivery of my two cars, would you like to join me? I was like, yeah, let's go up and check this place out. So let's show you around, show you what Porsche Perth is all about, and then uh, take delivery of these two insanely cool cars. So here we are inside car number one, an incredible Gen 2 GT3 RS. Now weirdly, I've never been a big fan of racing yellow on Porsches. I know that might sound ridiculous, hear me out. Uh, signal yellow, I really like, but there's something about racing yellow when it's in a big block of color, for me, it was just a little bit too primary. In Weissark pack, with all of this contrasting carbon, it's actually the opposite. It's one of the best spec GT3 RSs I think I've ever laid eyes on. It's absolutely stunning. And let's face it, nothing really says race car like bright yellow. It's so in your face and so dramatic, and I think that is exactly the kind of spec that this car deserves. Uh, it has so much external contrasting carbon that it suits this specification perfectly. Black wheels, and of course, massive carbon wing, uh, black bonnet and black insert in the roof, all in carbon fiber. I mean, even those vents on the wheel arches, all of these things tie in beautifully and it sets off the yellow incredibly well. Now this is uh, production wave two of generation two GT3 RS. Um, to set a spot of context, uh, wave two of GT3 RS was slightly different to Production Wave 1 in the UK for two reasons. First of all, Production Wave 1, you weren't able to option the Wysock pack in the UK. So all Production Wave 1 cars uh, were one color. You couldn't get the titanium cage, you couldn't get the magnesium wheels, etc., etc. Basically, anything that came as part of the Wysock pack was not an option on Wave 1. Uh, wave 2, not only is there Wysock pack available, but also it has succumbed to the notorious fuel particulate filter which is a system that has become part of a regulation in order to improve the emissions output of cars such as this now then the other thing about this car is that towards the end of the life cycle, Porsche often open up uh, optional extras, or should I say bespoke extras, which um, weren't available on Wave 1. So, if I just show you around the interior of this car, I shall give you some examples. Take for example these door handles. Now you'd be forgiven for assuming that that was a standard color option if you were to spec a yellow car with yellow contrast stitching that you would just simply assume that that pull handle there which is the door handle uh, would also come in yellow. Not so. Uh, by default on RS product this is red. Um, Porsche Perth had to speak with Porsche Germany in order to have this made in yellow to suit the car. Seems obvious here, but it is an optional bespoke request. And then there's other things, as I'm sure you can see in the frame of this shot, that the vent is trimmed in the matching yellow paint. And that theme continues on throughout the car here. All of these are options which are outside of the standard options list. And it just really ties it together. If I get a bit of a wider angle like that, where you can see yellow belts, yellow writing on the Schroth racing harnesses, yellow trim around the air vents, and then the yellow contrast stitching. Um, the theme is tied in wonderfully. And then up here as well, Weissach RS is also embroidered in 
yellow, which pops beautifully off this titanium cage. Uh, the titanium cage saves uh, an actually an alarming amount of weight over the standard steel roll cage. I think it's around about a 20 kilogram saving versus the steel cage. So not only is it beautiful and made up of pure welding porn, uh, it's also incredibly lightweight as well. So that for me is one of the major benefits of Wysock Pack is predominantly weight saving. And then of course on the dash you have the all important Wysock badge to indicate that you are indeed in something over and above a standard, if you dare call it a GT3 RS standard, uh, but it's just something that would highlight that this indeed is a special edition car. And then what's great about Porsches um, is that even if you spec the racing harnesses, you still have the option of your regular seat belt as well. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but some brands don't actually offer that. If you spec harnesses, that's what you've got. Uh, with Porsche, you can have the option of both a harness and a seat belt, which of course, when you're using this on the road, when you come up to looking out of your side window at junctions, if you have a harness on, oftentimes it doesn't afford you the flexibility to, um, well, basically drive like a normal person on the road. They are obviously a very track biased feature. And then down here, optional extra, is the fire extinguisher. Um, in the earlier GT3s, they were often mounted down there in the footwell against the transmission tunnel. But in this, they've mounted it in front of the seat, which, take it from me, if you've ever passengered in a car with a fire extinguisher in the footwell, they really get in the way. So having it mounted there for the passenger is a much better deal. And there's also the all-important carbon fiber kick sills on the the door. Not only are they optional extra because they're carbon fiber, but if you opt for a different kind of kick sill or sill plate, um, you have the option to have them backlit and therefore illuminated. So the GT3 RS inscription, which is on these, is backlit and it looks wonderful. Uh, interesting tip, you can opt for bespoke writing or lettering or whatever you want to be inserted in those kick plates. So if you had a company logo or a slogan or a saying or basically anything you wanted to, you could have that put in your backlit carbon sill. Pretty nice touch. And then one more finishing touch is the key also specced in racing yellow. Believe it or not, that is an optional extra, but of course, I mean, you just simply could not option that, could you? Not only uh, does it resemble the shape of a car, but it just ties everything in incredibly well because when you stick this in the dashboard, it hangs out and you can see it and it just pulls in the whole design and it's represented entirely on your key. So yes, the spec is on point. There's lots of custom details going on on the interior. Interestingly, one of the bespoke options on the exterior which isn't a Porsche accessory, is actually the number plate. Now, this has been created by a company called Four Dot. Uh, I've seen them around, but I've never had the chance to appreciate them up close. And what they do is create a bespoke plate with a bespoke shape that fits the character and feel of the car in question. So on this, it's got this angular design, which really uh, sinks nicely into the inlay area where the conventional number plate would sit. But rather than just being your standard rectangle, the body of the plate fits the contours and shapes of the car. I think it's a really nice touch. I'll be uh, exploring those for future cars. And if you watch the channel regularly, you know I have a thing for quirky plates like on the F12 TDF. Yeah, I just thought that was an, a nice touch to sort of tie it all in. And then here we are in the Speedster. Um, honor to even see one of these things, let alone be in one, and the prospect of driving this car and sharing it with you in the foreseeable future uh, gets me very excited indeed. Uh, let's just set a bit of context and significance. Conveniently, there's a, there's a plaque over my shoulder here which indicates how many of these cars were actually made. Worldwide, 1,948. That's celebrating the year of 1948. Uh, in the UK, there's probably less than 100 cars, and this is specced with the optional Heritage Pack, which is what most of the decals and graphics are 
on the outsider. That makes this car even more rare because not every speedster was spec'd in this configuration. But what's really nice about the Heritage Pack is that the numbers on the side aren't dictated by Porsche. You can choose whatever number you want to have on your car. As a example, Porsche recommend 48, hence the 1948. Um, but there's something about numbers with zeros. They're just very pleasing to the eye. This one's 70. Also, the number 70 is, is significant to this car because it was announced last year, which just so happened to be Porsche's 70th anniversary celebration. So all in all, it ties it together quite nicely. What I find fascinating about this car is even though we have a GT3 RS next to us, which I've just shared with you, fundamentally, the platform, the chassis, even a lot of the aero and body panels on this car are quite similar. Granted, the rear, vastly different, but the front, particularly the front air vents and the front bumper, it looks like it's straight off a GT3. Other than that, I can't believe how a car which on paper, the stats look very familiar. Porsche have done an amazing job of making this car feel so different, even down to the way this car is spec'd. This tan leather is beautiful, and I love how the 12 o'clock marker here as well is in matching tan leather. Even the writing on the gear stick, and that is a very important part of the characteristics of this car. This is, of course, a six-speed manual transmission connected to a 500 horsepower naturally aspirated GT3 derived flat six engine. Now, one of my favorite sounding cars on full chat is the Porsche GT3 or GT3 RS approaching 9,000 RPM. I like to let a lot more of that sound in by winding the windows down. Never did I think there would be a day where you could effectively take the entire roof off a GT3 and hear that sound to the degree that this situation here is going to allow for. It's going to be magic. Um, sadly, I was unavailable on the first drives of this car. Such a shame because I would have loved to have brought that to you. However, conveniently, my friend has just bought this one. So we will be uh, sharing the drive with you soon. Of course, there is no massive wing on this. So a lot of the uh, downforce and error has been channeled underneath the car in a sort of um, mini ground effect type of process. Uh, but other than that, this car is very much about the touchy feely tactile of being around it. It's a car to stimulate the senses visually, audibly, and the way you interact with it. Speaking of which, let's just slide this forward so we're in line with these wonderful pedals. Such a short throw box. It feels snick snacky, crisp. And Porsche famous for having basically perfect pedal placement for heel toe. Of course, uh, there is the option to put um, auto blip on this car. So it does the rev matching for you if you're feeling lazy. Uh, but just the fact that this is effectively a GT3 with no roof gets me so excited. I think this car is very much in the details. Now, interestingly, on the outside, uh, there are uh, graphics which are uh, stickers. So the numbers, for example, are actually stickers. There's also a blend. There's a combination of stickers for graphics and actual paint for graphics. So the white strakes that go over the uh, front arches, that's actually paint, whereas the circles are stickers. And then of course you have the sculpture behind you, uh, which effectively makes this thing a speedster. Now the actuation of the roof isn't fully electric. There's a lot of manual interaction with the roof required. Uh, it actually transpires that the rear cover is actually the carbon fiber, which is very trick. Uh, once again, all about saving weight. Despite the fact that this car has no roof and is effectively less of a GT3, the weight differences isn't that big because of course, when you remove the roof off a car, you have to improve the structural integrity. So weight is actually added to the car in order to strengthen the chassis. Uh, and then uh, as part of the safety regulations of cars with no roof, you have this anti-rollover bar system, which literally explodes out of these posts here just to stop your squash in your head if the car was to roll that also adds weight so less car similar weight um but really it's all about the drives but to be able to collect this car today okay it's absolutely tipping it down and we won't be driving out of, out of the showroom with the roof off but i want to save the drive anyway i want to hear from you where we should take this car and what we should do with it what environment would you like to see the first drive of this car because it's a very special opportunity for the first turn of the wheel in this to be in somewhere awesome to share it with you guys. Nice touch. Uh, Porsche Perth have thrown in a 911 Speedster Heritage Design Package little model. It's exactly the same spec as this car. It's so cool. Check out that. How nice is that? Such a 
great touch. But other than that, when you're in it, it's very much differentiated by the actual spec of the car itself. I particularly like the gold hardware when it comes to Speedster specific items. So take for example the plaque here, Speedster logo on the, as far as I'm concerned, class leading cup holders. Check these out. I know I've shared these many times before, but the origami <laughs> that takes place with these cup holders is so good. Sadly, the driver side one in 992 Porsche has vanished. Passenger still gets to enjoy it on their side, but I'm yet to find a better cup holder in any car. Because effectively, the whole of this interior here, everything we're staring at is a GT3 design. It's a GT3 product, but by wrapping it in beautiful leather and using totally different surface finishes and paints, look, these are the 918 seats, and look how they have been totally transformed by just using tan leather and GT silver to match the GT silver of the actual paint of the car. I think it is a stunning touch. And you've still got hints to GT3 with the fire extinguisher, but the overall effect is much more grand tour, isn't it? It's luxury, it's refined, and it's beautiful. And so there you have it, back where we started. I've spent some uh, time now with the guys from Perth, obviously checked out these incredible cars. I get the message. It feels a very intimate experience here. Also with it being a very new dealership, what I found fascinating was the same team which joined and walked through these doors from day one of opening are still here. So it feels a very family driven environment. Everyone's very passionate and proud about being here and putting this place on the map in such a, a relatively short period of time. So yeah, fascinating indeed. Who knows, I might find myself uh, shopping at Perth soon. Um, there's some very interesting Porsches being launched next year. So who knows, I might find myself up in Scotland uh, more regularly than I originally expected. I took delivery of my GT3 on the North Coast 500. These guys, and they say they actually put packages together for their clients, recommending routes, putting them up in hotels and even collecting them from the airport when they come up and buy a car. So interesting options. Anyway, uh, leave your comments and feedback below on the two Porsches which I've shown you today. Uh, thankfully, they belong to a dear friend of mine, so we will be seeing more of those cars on the channel in the future. Probably not the Speedster in this weather, but definitely GT3 RS coming soon and uh, Speedster, well, spring, summertime. So comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time. Ciao!